Ben Cartwright writes, Hi Collider, big fan of the show. Yourselves along with other critics have slated the fifth wave another teen novel film that has failed to be a hit. Some of my personal favorite novels have all had busts and failed to make sequels. I am number four, Aragon, etc. And those which have gotten sequels have been disappointing. Divergent and The Maze Runner. My question is, with Hunger Games and Twilight aside, why do you think it is so hard for companies to produce a good version of these much-loved novels? Thanks and keep bringing the filthy. Because contrary to popular belief, you guys have heard me say this a lot, it's almost impossible to make a good movie. Making a good movie is a monumental feat. Making something in a subjective medium like the film business that people are going to sit down and you will engage with them on whatever level engages them and they enjoy it and like it and you turn out a quality product, that is Herculean in, in nature. And that's why we, like those of us at this table, have such big respect for filmmakers who can do it well, especially those who can do it well on a consistent basis. So let's get that away. It's hard to make a good movie, period. But then you get into this other issue that I think a lot of people lose sight of, that just because something is a good novel does not necessarily mean it will make a great movie. I, I say this a lot, we talk about it in comic books a lot, sure. like whether it's you know certain storylines or certain costumes or certain aesthetics, we often, you'll hear us say quite a bit, just because something works on a printed page or in a, in a photo or in a drawing does not mean that will necessarily translate well into a different medium in the big screen and play out well there. So you take a lot of these novels that might work really great as novels, but they may not translate very well into great movies. So it all depends on the interpretation, the adaptation of it as well, but it is a tough, tough task. Don't underestimate how difficult it is to take, especially pre-existing material like that, and turn it into a take it, transport it into a completely different medium and make something good and watchable out of it. It's tough. Schnepp, you've done it. Yeah, right, thanks, man. Um, yeah, I mean, and also specifically for this young adult kind of craze that's been going on, I mean, you could target it right back to Twilight. So after Twilight, made a lot of money for that stu for different studios. Everybody got jumped on this. Oh, this train of like these uh, you know teens that are reading these books. Let's get in on that. So you've seen so many, uh, and only a few are hits. Mocking, uh, you know, the Hunger Games. That's that's the one that kind of sticks out to me. And then hundreds of failures. I mean, I think we're almost in, like I'm not even I'm exaggerating very slightly. I think there's like 30 young adult films that have come out since Twilight that have all failed not including the Hunger Games. I mean, you got the Mortal Instruments, you got, I mean, there's so many to list The City off. of Bones, we both City agree, Bone. was great. Yeah, yeah right. City, <laughs> yeah, yeah, we love City, City of Bones. Yeah, we subtitled <laughs> the City of Suck, just so you know. Um, is but, that good? Is that, is that not, <laughs> yeah. that's not it's, ideal? That is means, that the kitty slang Mark, for good? <laughs> that means it's perfect. Perfectly poopy. Um, it's it, you're, you're right, it's rough, but then you're also taking this thing that's like a lot harder to translate, which is like, why did this work for kids you're like, well, it's sort of like when you watch when you're like eight and you're watching like Flappy's War, some weird animated series that only, you know, like you have the Flappy box and the, all these different things that you're, you're eight and it kind of makes sense. Then you're in your 30s. You're like, I remember Flappy. Let's watch that. And it's, it's, it's just like horrible. It only works for the time period that you are, you know, it's made specifically. It's targeted specifically for your age group. And I think a lot of these young adult books are really kind of targeted for the age group where in like you're in high school, you have problems fitting in, they or you're like this guy's hot, this chick's amazing. It's like it's very simplistic and only the ones that are really well written are the ones that rise to the top. You'll see like even Fifty Shades of Grey is sort of like was you know written as fan fiction. Twilight it, fan fiction. Twilight yeah. fan fiction, but it's I haven't read it, but I've heard it's horribly written. So I mean, people are like read books constantly. Like, I, I eat I eat books for breakfast. They're like it's horrible. So <laughs> it's a tough racket. I mean, so there's a it's, it's you're, you're betting. You know, a lot of studios are like, well, what about this one? Or what? Do I, you know, they don't really know. They're like buying these books in bulk and like which ones can we develop into the next Hunger Games or Twilight? So you know, it's a, it's really tough. So it's it's hard to tell really. I mean. But just because it's a bestseller really doesn't mean anything. I mean, the issue I have, and I don't read anything. I don't read anything that's longer than a pamphlet. Like I, I don't <laughs> leaf through books that often. And I think the issue that you have in making these movies from novels is that you have such a fervent fan base, and they cannot wait to sink their teeth into the movie. And so, to please them, you have to stick so close to the source material. When even comic book fans have accepted that a studio is going to change the story a little bit to serve a cinematic universe better. 
the few times that they have stuck to the source material and it's worked, I would say is Harry Potter, where for whatever reason, maybe it was because J.K. Rowling did such a great job writing those and she had some sort of a cinematic vision in mind. I'm not sure. Same thing with the Hunger Games, but even by the time the Hunger Games wore off, the initial craze, and you saw the end of the last Hunger Games movie, it's like, well, now they finally got pinned down. They had to stick to what actually goes on in the books, even though it did feel like it was a little forced, in my opinion, in the movie, which I otherwise thought was really good. So sometimes if you have to stick so close to the source material because the fans won't let you get out of those handcuffs, it's going to hamper the movie. Um, this totally off topic, but you're saying that you don't read anything longer than a pamphlet, right? Right. Totally off topic. I don't know even why I'm telling this story. There's this great story, a true story. I believe it happened in Canada. It could be a little bit wrong about reading. You're going to like the story. It's a story about reading. Okay. So there is this woman who, this is a true story, guys. Look it up. There's this woman who um, was using a contraceptive jelly and she ended up getting pregnant and she was, she sued the company that made the contraceptive jelly. She was suing them. Yeah. In court, what turned out was she didn't read the instructions on, on the contraceptive jelly. And what she did was she took the jelly, spread it on toast, and consumed the contraceptive jelly. Huh. Now, her argument in court, your look is priceless right now. I'm starting to see <laughs> the air in her logic. So in court, her argument in court was basically this. When you're in the mood and things are happening, you don't really have time to read instructions. To which the greatest judge in the world responded, but you had time to make toast. <laughs> which is the greatest judge. So wow. how that came out of all this, I don't know. I warned you I was going way off on a tangent. Yes. But it's so hard go. to explain to little Junior why he lives in this mansion. It's like, right. man, what? Mom, you don't work at all. How do we have all this stuff? Well, I sued the company that was responsible for making you. Kids, see idiocracy now. <laughs> this, I mean, oh my God. Hey guys, if you like this clip, click here to watch the entire entire episode. Also, make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel because it'll help you stay up to date with all the stuff we've got going on here at Collider.